now. And what is understanding? The subject of this video. The dictionary defines understanding as a noun, meaning the ability to understand something, comprehension, the power of abstract thought, intellect, an individual's perception or judgment of a situation. So the ability to understand something is really what we mean by duplication. If you can duplicate something, if you can make an exact copy of it in your own mind and analyze it to see how it works, you pretty much understand it. You know how to do it. Now, they take it a little higher. Comprehension. Comprehension actually means understanding how it works. I comprehend the activity or the working of a computer, for example. I know how the whole thing works. I used to work in the computer industry, and I understand RAM, ROM, code, operating systems, the whole bit, and I know pretty much how a computer works. That's comprehension, as distinct from understanding. I understand this is a computer and I know how to work it. If I really comprehend what a computer is, I know how it works and why it operates so it does. Then they say, the power of abstract thought. What is abstract thought? Abstraction means taking information away from something until only the essential is left. And usually what you have then is a set of relationships. This is higher than that. That is connected to this other thing. This thing is the cause of something else. If you do this, that will happen, and so on. Those are abstract relationships. And in our next video on analysis, we're going to get really into this. Intellect. Well, of course, intel means intelligence. And ectos means work. So intellect means working with intelligence. Working with intelligence is completely different than working with Brawn, brains instead of brawn, uh, producing an effect through the action of intelligence. This is much more efficient than physical work. Why? The pen is mightier than the sword. Why do we say that? Uh, and we see in history, it's true. It may not appear to be true in the moment, but over a long span of time, intelligent people get paid more, they have more status, more power and so many other things than, you know, people who work with their hands, for example. But why is that? Because intellect is a more efficient way of working. It's working with relationships and qualities of things instead of the physical being. So, not that intelligence is everything, but it's one of the most important things when it comes to making our work and life efficient and successful. And finally, understanding is an individual's perception or judgment of a situation. Situational awareness. What is the meaning of this situation? You're walking along the street, and somebody says, Hey, buddy, want to buy some software? <laughs> well, maybe it wouldn't happen walking along the street. Maybe it happens on the internet. Hey, buddy, you want to download some free software? What are the odds? This download has got some virus in it, or some malware. What are the odds that maybe it has a backdoor, you know, for the NSA or something? Pretty good. Why? Because this is an attack vector. This situation is designed to allow you to suspend your judgment, uh, suspend your good judgment. Well, wait a minute. I'm not getting this from an authorized source, so it could be contaminated with something. It, it could, could carry a payload that I'm not bargaining for here. You see, every situation has a strategy to it. Every situation has a meaning. Okay, if I'm in an airplane, and suddenly the airplane adopts some unusual attitude, I know I've got to start worrying. <laughs> if you know airplanes, if you know flying, if you know when the plane should turn and how it should turn, you know, if you study the plats of your airport approaches and you know how the plane is going to come in, 
what he thinks is going to fly over and so on like that. You can actually track the flight pretty, pretty closely. But if it deviates from that pattern, then you know there's some problem, there's some issue. This is the meaning of things. The, the plenty assuming an unusual attitude is the situation. But the meaning of that situation is something beyond the immediate situation. It has to do with context. The background that we bring to awareness of a particular situation. And that series is all about context. In fact, we could say, you could even define mastery as the creation of a context that uses you. You know, normally, when we do intelligent work, we use the information. We create the context. We give the meaning to the situation. But in a situation of mastery, we're in a condition of mastery. It's the other way around. The context uses you. That's why we say it becomes your natural self-expression, your spontaneous response to a given situation. You don't have to think or calculate because you have the being of that kind of thing. You have the context that uses you in that situation. Any highly trained musician, for example, knows, uh, experiences it. When the conductor gets up on the podium and wraps his baton, immediately they get ready to play, whatever it is. They don't even think about it. Why? Because as expert musicians, the context of expert musicianship is using them. So similarly, if you become an expert at anything, you become a genius at anything, the context of that being is going to use you to be that thing. And that's expertise. That's genius. That's mastery. So how do we get there? By creating the name and form. Not in the old way, but in a specific way that leads to the mastery of that particular field. That's what we're doing. Now, for the purpose of skillful living, understanding means to apply your intelligence to a subject to comprehend how it works. This means building a dynamic model of a subject that incorporates cause and effect. This is how you obtain understanding. Now, what's the relationship between understanding and duplication? In the previous video of this series, we presented the technique of duplication. Duplication is prerequisite to understanding because working with an imperfect or incomplete copy of the source material only leads to errors in understanding. It's just like if you download a program from the internet and there's some error. Now, the software won't run. Or if it does run, there'll be some errors in the output. Maybe the crash the computer runs. So if we start thinking or analyzing from an imperfect copy, of the original source material, how are we going to come up with the correct results? It's not possible. It's very, very important that we start with a clean copy, a perfect duplicate of the original material, assuming that the original material comes from an expert. By the way, that's one of the things we're going to analyze in our uh, ontological analysis. Make sure that the material we're studying actually contains all the information that we need to become expert. So we have to make a duplication of that information and then begin to analyze that to see the cause and effect. In fact, the process of understanding is one of the best ways to check the accuracy of duplication. If your standard of duplication is good, you will have little trouble building an understanding of the subject. Difficulty in understanding is a sign of inaccurate or incomplete duplication. Just like your computer crashing or other errors is a sign of some error in copying the software from the source. If you have an error in the definition of an important term, your model won't work. Your analysis won't work. It won't come up with correct results. Your situational awareness will fail. You'll get the wrong answer. Uh, you won't be able to perform the task or whatever it is. That's a sign that your duplication is incorrect. And you have to go back and retread your fundamentals in the subject. The actual standard of duplication is that you can recite the definition of each word or symbol appropriate to its context. If you can't do that, 
Your process of duplication is incomplete. This is the actual standard of duplication, that you can incite the definition of each and every term, especially with the small relationship words, such as if, then, for, such, at, around, up, down, in, out, all these words have dozens of definitions in the dictionary. You should be able to recite the proper definition according to the context. One of my favorites is up. Uh, fill the car up. What do you mean? Fill the car on the ceiling? What are we talking about? No. Up in that context means in or into a condition or position of fullness or completion. And memorize the definition. Because we use that word so many times without any idea what it actually means. Uh, do it up, roll it up, light it up, fill it up. And what it really means is it's into a condition of fullness, completion. So there are many, many small words in the English language, especially, that have numerous, sometimes even conflicting meanings, depending on the context. And you have to sort this out. I can't do it for you.